This is uh, Roland, Roland Schimmelfennig. Hallo. <laughs> hey, Roland. Uh, and this is the first time we are doing this, Roland, uh, where... Uh, and, and the reason why we're doing it, or, or I said, why, why can't we just do a talk with you? It's actually because you uh, accepted to come here and do a workshop. And then it seems such a luxury that we would just do that with the actors and not have some kind of just public meeting for theatre nerds. Uh, are we all theatre people? We do theatre, yeah, so it can be a little bit nerdy. And I have personally been longing for kind of theater nerdy meetings. And it can be with the audience, it can be with, uh, but, but just for us, a forum where we can talk about what we are really into, and with people who uh, are profound theater people. And I think you are a theater person, Poland. <laughs> Even though you also write novels now. Mm. Uh, so you are. Perhaps we're losing you. No, no, no. We're not losing you. No, no, no. This is definitely also a way for me to <coughs> tie you to the stage. Don't you know. We're not losing uh. you. We will have a conversation here. We have two hours. But we also need to have some coffee and to meet upstairs. So one and a half hours is what we have on stage. And there will be much of uh, many uh, possibilities for questions. The plan is that I uh, ask you some questions, but you can say, basically, if they're stupid <laughs> questions, then you just go on yourself. I'm quite sure you're capable of that. And, uh, and then we have prepared a little bit from uh, Blackwater, Das Schwarze Wasser, mm -hmm. uh, which we are going to perform in September. Mm. Yeah. Should we... Should we start? Yes. Um, and this is a question ever since I met you, you know, and I, I came, I met you in Berlin and I came home and, and people were asking me questions. We went on actually for, for some hours talking about all kinds of things, but, but then I came back here and then the people was asking me, uh, uh, who is he? I mean, really? And I didn't ask you. Who are you? <laughs> because you don't, but you were born in Göttingen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, 67. Yeah. Um, Göttingen. I, it's, it's very funny. I, it's, it's, you know, it's a small town, maybe 130,000 people, university town. So it's shrinking and growing with the university towns. And, and there's uh, the vacations, it's sort of empty, and then when the, the, the term starts again, life gets back into town. Um, and it's a, it was a perfect place to, to grow up, because for the many students, there is more cultural life than you would find in a town of similar shape without university in Germany. Because, of course, these young people are demanding something. So, uh, when I worked in the, let's say, in, the, in my teenage years, in the 80s, uh, end of 70s, uh, were really defined by this cultural life. You know, that was before the invention of internet and uh, before the, the invention of VHS, so you needed cinema, and you needed uh, theatre, sort of analog cultural life. Yeah. And there was a lot of fight in Britain. There was a lot of political struggle because there was time of the peace movement later, there was uh, the students radicalizing themselves, we as <coughs> young people as well, later on. Uh, there was Chernobyl and these things, so we were sort of more or less active or aware teenagers. And, uh, and that was good, that gave me a good input. You find in Göttingen 
many people from different countries because they, they, they come by to work a little bit or study a little bit at the university. So in my parents' house, especially for the social skills of my mother, there were a lot of people from abroad. America, England, Turkey, Polo, uh, yeah, Poland, uh, uh, Scandinavian people, uh, French. It was sort of international. Uh, and that was great to experience as a young person. You said your, your father's a professor and a veterinarian professor. My father did not have any social skill at all. He was a, <laughs> <laughs> he was a crazy, the mad professor. <laughs> he was a mad professor. The one with the two different shoes without noticing. The one, the, the one who, go, who went to the laboratory and never showed up again. <laughs> <laughs> for the next three years. Uh, but, uh, and your mother was also working at the university? Yes, she was working, but she was working in the, in the so, but um, in the arts, in the arts, is that what you say? No, the human, yeah, in the, human. Yeah, in the, in the uh, as a, as a not, not as a doctor, but as a sort of in, in the how do, how do you say that? Uh, um, well, let's say research and research, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but, and, and then uh, you said that because you went to. I mean, you didn't start out to be a writer, but you were writing when you were 17 because there came some Turkish people to yes. your house. Yes, I was writing all the time, actually, but, but I, well, I started rather early because, I don't know, I just wanted to. Uh, but, uh, of course, I never thought that it would be possible to, to make a living out of it. And especially <coughs> with drama, uh, I think it that you need some time and some experience. To write drama was, let's say, 14 or 15 is a little bit difficult. Because there is a certain lack of experience in life. Uh, uh, it's, I think at that age it would be nicer or, or easier to write poems or stories, uh, but not going into the terms of dialogue. Uh, but I always wanted to do it, and I, I, I had this strong uh, attraction to theatre. But um, since I thought I would not be able to do it as a, as a, as a professional career, I thought I would look better to look for something that, that's a little bit similar. It's a little silly you thought, but uh, so similar, or similar, ah, something where you have a pen and a paper, so to write something. So I thought, ah, maybe I should become a journalist. And uh, it sounds intelligent, no, that is not. So um, I, 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 I started as a journalist, more or less. Yeah, in Istanbul. In Istanbul. Yeah. And, uh, and, and how did that happen? I met, I, well, I, I went to Istanbul after school because I met, I, I knew Turkish friends of my parents and uh, and they invited me to come over for some months. Uh, and I said, yes, wonderful. So I went from Göttingen, 120,000 people, to Istanbul, 40 million people. <laughs> and, um, and they picked me up at the airport and, said, well, and they said, we have a job for you. Uh -huh. And I was, I was sort of maybe 19. And uh, I said, wait. So they put me in, in, the, in the office of a German-Turkish or Turkish-German newspaper. There is a, a, a very important Turkish newspaper called Cumhuriyet, which is sort of a social democratic paper and maybe the most, most serious paper I know in Turkey. Uh, traditionally left-wing. That's uh, the, the head of that paper was arrested some time ago, now he's free, he's in Germany, but, in Germany, but uh, that's, they have big problems now. So, anyway, at that time they had a supplement, a monthly supplement for the, for the German, Turkish German readers in, in Germany, which was done, which had the same article in German and in Turkish, or in Turkish and in German, so they could train uh, their language. That's the thing that happens, that exists as well in, in English and, uh, and in French, I think. Other, um, with other people. So I was in that 
in that uh, office and I had to do the German corrections, the spelling in 87, no internet, as I said before. So you couldn't just Google. You didn't have the auto uh, repair thing. So you needed somebody who's really doing it. Uh, and my spelling in German <laughs> is not that... <laughs> so sometimes a little bit creative, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, and then I was never very good at it, but I, was, I sort of, I don't know, it worked. And then I very soon began to write little things for that same paper. Uh, and then I met other journalists working in, in, in Istanbul because the circle of, let's say, a little bit left-wing journalist art was not that big. Even in the big town, you, would, you, you can find your way very fast. Everybody is connected. So I got into that, and then I started to write. We worked together with a with a correspondent of the German paper, and I I um, did some radio and I did some some of that paper, some articles for that paper. But I, my Turkish wasn't good enough to 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 do real, let's say, research to do to go really deep into uh, problems, I always needed a translator. And, uh, and that's something that you can't do in the long run. You need, you need to know the language really, otherwise you will always lose a lot on translation. And sometimes the translator wants to manipulate, manipulate a little bit the truths as well. So um, I found out that I wasn't able really to catch the truth. And, um, as a journalist? Yes. With a language handicap. Language handicap and maybe as a problem in general of the profession that you have to decide. You will probably never be able to get the whole image. So, uh, that, and that frustrated me a little bit. Um, I had to go back to Germany for some time. There was a friend who applied for the, for the uh, drama school. They had a class for directors. And I said, oof, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And, and, and then you started studying direction. Yes. To become a regisseur and yeah, director. Yeah, that was the, I mean, there's another, there's another profession that's close to writing now. That's, I mean, if you don't uh, work as a journalist, as a director as well, you feel sort of very close to. You're not doing it, but you at least work with text and something like that. Mm -hmm. So you were slowly cruising yourself into writing. You didn't start out as a dramatist. So you were a journalist and then you started to become a director. Yes, and then I, in, in München, in, München? in, in Munich. Mm -hmm. At the Münchner Kammerspiel, that's a traditionally, it's a, it's a good theater. It's a city theater and it had, it had a very good reputation. Sort of classical town community theater. Uh, in, a, in a good way, good training for me, because I didn't do that study, I didn't study for a very long time, I did it for a year or two, and then, uh, well, the first year in that school they put you together with the acting students and you have to do all these classes, speaking, singing, moving, dancing, very funny, uh, and, uh, and then in the second year they put you in the light, in the light department, sound design, whatever, so you learn sort of theater that from the very start. Mm -hmm. And during the second year they they had a, I don't know, they offered me a job as an assistant director in the, in the, in the theater next to the school. So I quit the school and became an assistant director for the next years. So, so you didn't finish your education? I'm, no, I never finished my education. You're semi-educated semi already. I'm not educated. <laughs> <laughs> Good team. <laughs> non educated worker, they would put me in that closet if they had to. Non educated worker? Yeah, I never, I never finished that. I have no diploma. <laughs> it was very funny. But later, they wanted me to become a professor at the university. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> but you did direct. Yes. I did, I did, I mean, this, this maybe three or four years of assisting, 
were very important to me because I had good directors to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, I mean, assistant directors know it's a horrible job. You hate it, you hate the director, you hate to make the coffee, you have to you hate to be sort of a servant of everybody, <laughs> the guy who who they yell at and that always has to keep the door open. So that's the suffering part. You, you, and, and, but you learn a lot. And for me the most important thing in, that, in all that time was that it sort of gave me the kick in the ass to move out and say, no, no, I want to be independent. And I want to do what I really want to do. And that was writing. So, so starting to write my first plays, well, well, that was happening during the process of assisting. And I was trying to really to throw my what is that? Life saving, how do you call that? Rettung uh, saving. Well, whatever, to get, to, 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 to get out of it. Rettung saving. Rettung saving. Leave boy. Yeah. The thing you throw out in the world yeah. to save uh, a person. Yeah. To get away from being a director's assistant. Yes. You and became a writer. Yes. I'm just trying to kind of cruise my into mm -hmm. because you were. Uh, when I read your CV and when I try to find. I, I ask myself, who are you and how did you come into theatre? It was certainly not the direct choice. You know, you were 20 saying, I want to become a dramatist when I grow up. And now I go to dramatist school. Or you were a journalist, you were a director, you, you were kind of uh, cruising like this. Yeah, thanks to my friend Jan, who had the idea to go to that school. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would never have done it. I would have never done it. But no, the, I, wanted, always, I always wanted to be a dramatist. Yes. You always wanted that. When I'm, did you discover you wanted to become a dramatist? Maybe 16, 17. Okay. But uh, I didn't see I, I didn't see the way how to do it. I I, I didn't see um, I, I I understood that I need some skills. Mm -hmm. I think that's something you really because writing drama is a lot about skills. No, but it's about experience, and uh, it's about aggression. I think, and it's about. Uh, uh, let's say deception. You need you need to have some sort of experience in your life, or some anger, or some something you really desire, or something you really fear, so that you can start with that form of, of writing, because that's what you are in theater. Often you're talking about these big issues: love, fear, death. It's not just. Uh, a romantic exercise like maybe a poem. It's bigger because it's public. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I wasn't able to do it with 17. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Büchner maybe was, but, I, 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 but he was living in a different time. So uh, I, I needed to, to spend some time in professional training in terms of suffering in, in terms of find your own motivation and find what you really want to talk about. And that's, uh, and I, I think I was about 24 when I came to that point. Mm -hmm. 24, 25. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and still, in the early works, you can see that they're very, very personal. Not and, and trying to deal with yourself and trying to transform that into dialogue. But it's not like the <clears throat> more open form that I found later. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I want to state that a little bit because you have uh, uh, many, many people talk about how productive you are. You have uh, written, I don't much more than 40 plays, at least they've been performed all over mm -hmm. the world, and you really produce. And I was just trying to figure out how, because you have begin, I haven't been able to read everything you've written or what I can get hold of, but I'm just trying systematically to, to try and read uh, what you have been, been written. And just the last year, I got four scripts and you come up with a novel and, and you, um, you really produce a lot. 
So this thing about that it's lived life. Mm. You say that it has you have to live. Mm. Uh, I met an actor once who said that's what they come from. Come for Gita Nervi is her name, she's a Danish actor. She said they want a piece of my lived life, a piece of me basically every night. That's what they pay mm -hmm. to see lived life. And it's a little bit related to what you're saying that you have to experience something. Yes. yes. But for I mean, how do you get that? It's not that no, it's not that difficult actually. It's a, a, I, I think I could technically one could produce more. You said that thirty percent capacity when do you sleep? All the time. <laughs> All the time. I really, I'm really, I, 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 I consider myself lazy and, and weak and, 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 and seducible to bad influences. Uh, uh, like really, people hanging around, in Berlin, you know, sun, sun is coming up, what are you doing? Are you working? No, going to the pub, have a beer. So, um, you went to the boat the day before yesterday? Yes, for example, what a great opportunity. 30 weeks in Berlin, you can't work on that day, it would be ridiculous. You have to party. So, um, uh, and then I'm sitting on that boat saying, uh, uh, I brought the manuscript, I have the pen here, but look at all these people around me getting drunk, I can't sit down and work a little bit. But no, it's technically, it's. But you do. Produce. I do uh, produce. Yeah. I that's I'm I'm that's the good thing about my small or short journalist career. I do have a system. I count words. It's it's it sounds horrible. Hmm. It sounds so unsexy. But it's I, I do it because we had to do it in in in, that, in, in for the well writing the articles for the paper. You really had to count the words. Not we didn't count the. The what is it? The, the letters or the spaces. We we counted words and we knew. Aha! Uh -huh, this is page one. We have to do thousand words or eight hundred. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can calculate. A play can have between if it's a very slow play <laughs> seven thousand. That's very very short. But can go up to thirty thousand. Yeah. How many words can you write in, in a day? Mm -hmm. Easily 1,500. If it's prose, up to 3,000. If it's drama, I would say 1,000. Mm -hmm. So you can play, you write a play in 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> so you can technically. Write, technically, you can write 12 plays a year. <laughs> and and you said cut on. Kaderan was about, I don't know many, how many thousands of, of plays he has written, but I think probably he wrote a play in two days. So, but if you're sort of slow and you write a little bit every day because you can't write drama very fast, because it has so many empty spaces, white spaces between the lines that have to be filled up with whatever sentiment, aggression, uh, emotion. Uh, that the, sort of the process of writing is getting slower because you have to imagine what they're saying, how they do it. You just you don't write like you would write in prose. And on that warm day, there was three people sitting on the river, blah, 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 and the sun was shining. You can't do it. You can't. You don't have that flow. You have to think. What? No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this, 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 and that, and, and this, this has that been four words? What? <laughs> no. Come on. Yeah, four words. So you see. You don't advance that fast. But you can easily, I think two or three, well, two plays in the end is possible. If you have the idea, if you don't, or if you don't, if you don't have the idea sort of clear, then it takes more time. I think that's the only thing that really takes time, to find out what you really want. If you know that before you start... Because that's how you work. You yeah. said we were talking about since you were here and and perhaps <coughs> we hope we will try to do a workshop and, and, and hopefully write something for us. But you said mm, about two years or one and a half year I need to digest and the more time I have mm -hmm. to digest the better. Yeah. Or, or there was something and, and, I, and this is nerdy and if it's too nerdy Please put up your hands and say, "Kid, move on, or let us talk to him. But I'm just, I am personally really into 
the technique of theater and, and what are sometimes like counting words or what is it that makes us get the curtain go, go up and we produce things and uh, the craft and so on. And, and you said, that's how I do. I need to have an idea. Yeah, you need to have idea. Clear idea. Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, the thing, the last thing I sent to you is about a man who comes home and he's already there. So the first line is when I came home, I was already at home. Something like that. I'd seen a house come by, shoot down. So it's a double thing. It's a little bit of amphitryon in here. It's a sort of a twin thing. So it's a sort of comedy thing and it's a nightmare, of course, if you're confronted with yourself. Uh, so I was walking around with that idea, which is sort of a classical idea, a classical uh, theater plot, in a way, for a long time. And, uh, and I, I knew sort of about, about the, the, let's say, the taste of it, what I, what I was looking for, something bitter, something funny at the same time. But I didn't find the way in. I didn't find the setting that opened up sort of the door uh, that made it possible to really just write it down. And that is something you can not really look for. Well, you have to look for it, but in the, in the end it will pop up. It's, it's something you can't sort of, you can steer at. It's, yeah, it's something you have to wait for. Uh, because we've talking about, we talked about the woman from before was the same thing. I knew what I wanted uh, for a long time, but it took me maybe about a year to, before I was sort of ready to just write it down. Um, so, but that's that's the basic thing. You have to know what you want. Hey Amen. Uh, so how do you? How how is that process? Are you just becoming pregnant and then growing for nine months and then write it all? Yes. Out in one, or do you use post-its and back of uh, napkins or both? Like both. Well, first, pregnancy, right? And then, um, but then you can, sometimes you can't even see it growing. It happens sort of in the back of your head. Um, it, it might help to, to try to write an outline, and then you see that it doesn't really work. And, but sort of the, the, the magical moment is when, uh, when the idea transform, transforms in some sort of theatrical situation. And that is, uh, that is sort of a sound, or let's say an aggression or a fight, that a situation on stage, maybe between two actors or maybe Maybe there was just one actor talking to the audience, but that's also some sort of situation, a setting. And if I have that one, the very basic theatrical process, what's happening on the beginning of the play, then I'm then I can do it. Then I have it sort of then the imagination is, is strong enough to to write down something that will go on on stage. That's a little bit different than writing a play, but because I always see sort of what's yeah. Something I imagined that would go on on stage. But when you write that first line, a man come, comes home and he's already there. Mm -hmm. Do you know the end of the play? Then? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the point. Yes. I if do. you know the beginning, so the beginning is very important. Yes. But I've heard many times to say, yeah, it's like if you have the opening. You, you need, but it can be uh, I, that I'm very sure of the end, and then <laughs> when I get to the end, it will change. That can, that's like a sand dune, they move with the wind, so, so, so and that can happen, the, the material has something inside it that I under, and, and underestimate it from something. That, that's happening all the time, actually, that the material <laughs> cheats on you. Cheats on you. But just before when we were sitting here, before you were let in, you were saying that sometimes you, you were drunk to it for a while and, and you would like to sit in empty spaces and kind of... Theater spaces and imagine things going on on stage. 
that is beautiful. Yeah, so that's a beautiful thing to do. And, uh, and I, I just, the point here might be that good taste is also, it's just, it's situations and you have to imagine it's, what is it, happening. I mean, I mean it's, the thing is, uh, it's spoken word. It's not literature in the way you would read it. Of course, the, the, the big ones, Shakespeare and stuff, it's wonderful to read it, but very difficult as well for me. Uh, but the idea is that it's spoken and heard. So it's, it's, it's not so much on the paper. No. I mean, of course it's on the paper, but that's not the idea. And, and I, can, I can remember because that was a very good moment for me and confirming and happy moment in Berlin when I met you. And I said, for me, the, the theater is very much about storytelling. Yes, you said. Storytelling and it's the dramatist meeting the actor. And the actor meeting the audience. Yeah. Or the audience meeting the whole thing. The audience presenting, or no, but sort of sharing a, a, a story with the audience. Is, is generally my idea yeah. of what's going on when you have a stage. Which is not to talk down the director or no. the sonographer, because... They can, ruin, they can ruin it easily, but... Not. <laughs> 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 but hopefully not. Hopefully the director or the set designer or everybody in the team will give their own input to the story and the way how to tell it. And, uh, and hopefully, what is told can be understood. Mm. I mean, we had, in the last 15, 20 years in Germany, this big wave of, how do you say that, Textfläche, all the, the, the Polish and Jelinek, and the, sort of the end of characters, the end of story, the end of... It's more text, it's more language, it's, it's uh, very elaborate, but it's not that story-based theatre. Uh, and now I see a little rollback that it's going back to tell and share a story. I see exactly the same. Why do you think that is? No idea. I think because storytelling is something very, very basic something very, very human, most human, and I think if there is no story, uh, theatre tends to be boring. Uh, if, if there is no development, if so the story usually is about change, or need for change of fear of change, desire for change. Something has to change, or something has changed. That's, that's, that's what, what stories are about. I want to become the next king of uh, England. Or, uh, I am afraid that the next king will kill me. Or I am, I am in love with my neighbor's wife. I want to kill him or her, <laughs> or he me, to me. I don't know. So, but there's a lot of passion and a lot of change in all this. And, and, and this is what, what stories are about. So that's what, that, that's what uh, makes us crazy. We want to see how it goes, how will it go on? How will he do it? Will he do it? Will she do it? No? Ah, ah, ah yes. So it's, it's about suspense in a way. It's about suspense. A good story is about suspense. Yes, I think so. Yeah, and change. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, no change at all. Wonderful. Bake it. <laughs> Beautiful. But uh, that's the same something, thing. But where's you think it? something is going to happen. Yes. Where, where's, where's, where's the change? It doesn't come. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, it will happen. It will. Oh, no, it didn't. So that's, <laughs> that, that's the same, basically the same thing. Uh, perhaps we should, uh, because you... Now we've been talking about storytelling, you said one funny thing, because we agreed, you know, that there is theatre if there is a story and an actor, and one person listening. And then you said, yeah, and, and, and they just sit there, just the actor on the stool, and then you said, yeah, and then after a while, perhaps somebody will say, shouldn't we paint that stool in red? Mm -hmm. So, so theatre is also definitely about all, all the things happening, or, 
or it's about the form. Because when we say storytelling, it's as if one day I woke up and storytelling can be something very simple, in a way. Like you were talking about how you got to Istanbul, or it's just me telling the story from I. But, mm -hmm. but the way you write has a very distinct form. So in a way, I was a little bit surprised when you said I'm a storyteller, because, for example, you never indicate who is saying what, or very seldom. Uh, you have a very minimalistic, it almost looks like a poem, and I thought perhaps we should just hear the first three pages of uh, Svatsa Vasa. Can we, because I, I gave it, come actors, come up, and just read. And it's Martin who has just, they, you, yeah, you, you just decided more or less who is saying what and how it's done. Because in, uh, in your place, you have to make a lot of decisions. Yeah, you, you really make directors and actors work. That's a form of respect. It's a form of respect. Yes. That's, that's good to know. That's, that's to include everything. Not yeah. to make things determine <coughs> The crew, the cast, the team can build up their own vision. Yeah, and that's really a distinct signature for you. I think too, it's almost like a process making, the, directing the play. It's like, a, I, can't, I can't figure out, there's something unfinished about it when it's finished yeah. from your hand. It's to hand over the material to the, to the, to the lead people. Yeah. And was it like that from the very beginning? No. no Can you no. just put two words about why do you do it? Oh, oh. It's really your signature. It's really. What do you want to read first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Then sit down and listen. Yeah. Come. It's the first three pages, and uh, and uh, most of you are going to be in the production. So it's the first time you just read, and this is just for us and for fun, and it's Karen and Johannes and Josephine and Sandra and Swin, beautiful actors, give them a hand. <laughs> okay. Stilla, liksom oberörd, det svarta vattnet, och på vattnet ligger om natten Stjärnorna, nära och fjärra och stilla, liksom oberörda sedan evig tid och för alltid. Bara en nattvind kan låta stjärnorna försvinna för en stund. Vattnet krusar sig, mörker, men sen... Sen dyker stjärnorna helt ljudlöst upp igen från djupet av det svarta vattnet. En, två... Tre tusentals. De har namn. Pluto, Venus, Uranus, Saturnus. Tusentals namn. I det svarta vattnet. Ouppnåligt nära. Var det Kort paus. <laughs> Vad har du varit? Vad då? Var kommer du ifrån? Vad är det med dig? Kort paus. Kom! Vi simmar. Vi hoppar ner i det svarta vattnet. I fjärran ljuskäglan från ficklampan i handen på en aningslös nattvakt efter hans sista runda. Kanske sonade han på en vit plaststol. Kom, vi hoppar i! Kort paus. Fingertopparna berör stjärnhinden som spricker. Med uppspärrade ögon dyker simmarna ner i det svarta. De utsträckta armarna söker efter botten utan att finna den. De unga kropparna glider genom mörker. De glider genom vattnet. Allting svart. Men högt ovanför dem, bruten på vattenytan, silveraktigt, glider månen. Glider månen. De böjer sig. Med bultande hjärtan. Lungorna fulla av luft. Med spända ryggradsfotor söker de vägen tillbaka genom luften, upp till månen och upp till stjärnorna. Tillbaka. Två. Tre, fyra huvuden dyker upp. Och 20 år senare står en man i 40-årsåldern blöt in på bara kroppen i dörren till sin lägenhet. Och hans fru frågar, och hans fru frågar vad är det som har hänt? Vad har det varit? Mannen säger... 
Ja, säger man. Men han vet inte hur han ska avsluta meningen. <laughs> so this is an opening. They, could, do you know where they stop? No. They, no, they stop. Uh, you know, it's the beginning, the beginning, and then the, the husband, the man, saying, uh, "Where have you been?" I. To the wife, mm-hmm. and uh, and and he can't answer, and then. And he doesn't really know what to say. Mm-hmm. So that's an element of suspense. It is. The time jumping helps because we all know it from cinema, from the movies. It's a very common tool. And uh, in theater, really, it has not been very developed. And uh, I think when I did The Woman from Before, I worked with that for the first time to make things faster. And, uh, and the, what you can see, uh, this, the, the beginning of this text is so very, very visual. It is a little poetic as well, but, but sort of you can see the stars, the water, the heaven, sort of the heaven image, which is very important to share with the audience, I think. But then we need something to speed up and to cut and to destroy the story. And then, because that's the nice thing with the imagination uh, of you, uh, that, that the, the brain is so fast. You can, you can jump from that time level to the other without any problem. And in a second, or less. So, um, and, but that's change. That's, that's movement. And, uh, and then you want to wait, get back to the other time level again. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there you have suspense. And that is suspense. So that's just an example of um, how you, within the first three pages, create a situation and you think, yeah, what is going to happen? Because it's also making a question that, we, that needs to be answered. Mm-hmm. Do you answer it? In the text? Mm-hmm. Don't know. No, don't know either. Mm-hmm. Not sure. No. Sometimes. Yeah. Better not. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> Don't know. What made you write the play? Uh, a commission. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, a very, a, very, a, very, a very nice commission. In fact, there's a, 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 you know, in Germany, lots of theatres are subsidized, uh, and that's very nice. Um, t- uh, but in this case, the money came from a bank, that sort of a left-wing bank uh, in Frankfurt, if that is possible as a term, but... but it's a contradiction in terms. Uh, well, let's say a bank that, that puts money into art or in social research. Every three years they put it into art. So they gave, they, they sort of chose the, the big issue, and that was uh, something like uh, the growing gap in our society, that we have sort of poor or immigrant uh, groups uh, in the population and you have other sort of more, I don't know, established people and this scissor is opening up and up and up. That was sort of the idea of uh, or the, 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 the big question of the bank. And of course they didn't uh, uh, want any answer, but they said this, look about this, look, look at this. A society with at least two heads, or maybe more. And, and luckily, I was thinking about the same thing before. Because it's a theme that somehow is bubbling in your head. Yeah, it, it was. Um, You're not the only one. Mm, of course, it, it, it's very, I mean, in, in Berlin, you can see it. And, 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 and the play has some Berlin elements, it has some London elements for me as well, it's sort of, uh, uh, but you can, you can see it, you can see that people don't mingle, mix with others, that's a fact, it's a sad fact, but that's the way it is in Germany, in Berlin, we have the huge Turkish society, um, and you can see that it doesn't really get together, it's, it's like this, and going on like this for 40, 50 years. 
So, um, and that's not even talking about the other Arabian immigrants or Syrian immigrants that came later. Uh, but it didn't really, it didn't really function, or it doesn't really function. And there are reasons for that, um, several reasons for that. But I wanted to get a little bit into that. Yeah. And I mean, the play is in a very, in a way, very romantical because of that night, and the play it does work. Two teenage groups uh, come together. That's romantic. That's romantic. <laughs> but but there is that's often a lot. Love story in your place? Of course. <laughs> because? So, yeah, I need a love story. <laughs> <laughs> you need a love story, it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm just thinking, do I always have a love story? Yes. Uh, I, the time I have been, I think, but, but in, in this play, you have to, it takes a while before you. You, you really find the love story and also uh, the death of the love story, and I'm, for the people who haven't written that, there are actually names in this, and there are actually some characters, and uh, <laughs> how you, Martin, will, will solve it, and how you will solve it together, we will find out, but there is a man who is meeting his, uh, the, the woman from that night. <coughs> it's, a, it's one of those nights, we've all been there, we're, in, we're 18, we've just finished high school, and uh, and we get drunk, or and in this situation they go to a swimming pool, they crawl over a fence and go to which is and the dark water in many ways is a swimming pool, and they fall in love, and then they split, and then they meet again. Mm -hmm. So so they do meet. Uh, so it's like they are they are like lines of relationships crossing. There is a brother, there's a husband, there's a husband's wife. And, uh, but basically there are two groups, mm -hmm. and, and that is... Um, that's a, it's a little bit West Side Story. Yeah, it's a little bit West Side Story. And that's again Romeo and Juliet. So, um, but that makes it, of course, if you have, if you talk about parts of society you don't let get really together, uh, if you're not talking about drug dealing or crime or other sort of, uh, you, you need to find a bridge. Yeah. And, um, and that's why that's why love story is a perfect perfect occasion and uh, and also very sad in a way. Um, it's um, is it a sad play? Yes, I would in, say. In your, you would say that it's sad? I think so, yeah. But it is also this, uh, this utopia. They're, they're very nice, nice moments. The, the, the moment I like best is when the teenagers discuss the different forms of Coca-Cola. Diet Coke and Cherry Coke and Vanilla Coke. And the, and, but there's only one true Coca-Cola. <laughs> so it's like a discussion about religion. Is there one God? Or how, so, so that's that's uh, that's, and they are all so smart, and they uh, they are really intelligent, and they have this 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 young, funny uh, thoughts and and good brains, and and um, so that's that's all. The future is wide open, in theory, and then it doesn't happen. So that's why it is a sad play. And I'll ask you something really stupid, but do you have any, do, do you have a hope that your place somehow can change something? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit now. Uh, I don't know. I, that's, that's a tough one because uh, it's a horrible question because you never know if art can change something. Would a painting or a piece of music would change something? Will a play would change something? It, uh, I think theoretically it would be possible, not, not for me and not in our society, but I think in theory it would be possible that a theatre project or play would start a revolution. I think it would be possible, but, um, but I wouldn't believe that really, that theatre has a really society changing Input 
it, it might get to the people and it might sharpen sort of the interior sensor or the, 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 the interior whatever, the aesthetic uh, training. Uh, but to expect more would mean that theatre is sort of a political tool, tool and it's not. It is a community thing, it's about people talking to each other, which is already a big thing. It's a very peaceful and very human process, people acting and playing in front of other people. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's so very, very man-made. And so, and that's, that's very, very strong about it. Uh, but, um... It's people playing in front of other people. Yes, it's wonderful. It's people playing in front of other people. I, just one moment, two moment, just one, uh, because I heard uh, from a colleague of mine, Simon Boga, he said, uh, you know, uh, uh, he always put in a trick in his play. He, he often writes in something that's impossible, mm. and it's it's really to play a little with the director, <laughs> to make it difficult, just to tease. And is that true? Or is that <laughs> are you a teaser of Roland Schimmelfeld yes, from so. Berlin? You are, I think you are. I think so. Yes. No. <laughs> so yes, yesterday you said I'm, I'm an Albanian uh, yeah. in my class, you're not an Albanian. No, but it's, uh, it's because with, since with language everything is possible. You, you can tell a story, you can create an image, that's all you need. Um, you can't really tease. Because for, for the team, the director, they, they always get, will be smarter. They always find, theater directors and actors always find better solutions than I have in my mind. And I was thinking that I have been teasing. In the end, they're teasing me. So, uh, but of course, it's nice to give them a little challenge and provoke them, and then they will get back to me and say, ha ha ha, you thought that you would. Making something yeah. that was impossible. Yeah, then of course it's possible. And I, I uh, one of the, the one of the plays that I have, Disco Paraiso. Mm -hmm. You have, for instance, uh, what was it? Uh, the, the, uh, Thirty Spanish people, twenty-four French people, mm -hmm. five bartenders. <laughs> you say something says, uh, "I'm coming in," <laughs> and I would call that teasing. No, that's travesty. That's uh, that's travesty. That, that's that, not that, 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 That's what we. There's a there's a in, oh. there's a guy with a handbag, and I'm not going to act this now because somebody might be filming. <laughs> and then it's on the internet for the rest of the time. <laughs> so the guy is standing there. I'm four blonde Canadians, uh, Canadian girls. So it's about travesty, and and another guy says, I'm thirty Spanish tourists. So that's a little bit Brechtchen, they're announcing who they are and acting, one actor is acting as a group. So that's, that's, that's very, that's just funny. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you wrote that in Spanish actually? Yeah. Because you've been to Cuba for four years. Yes. Well, I tried to write it in Spanish, but then I did it in English, German, Spanish, in mix. <laughs> These are very short lines that were the place written in the way it is. <laughs> it's very short. I'm 30 Spanish, that's, that's easy in Spanish. You can do that Google Translate. Yeah, oh, no, there's no internet in Cuba, so you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> there's no internet in Cuba. Yeah, no, we have to go to parks to find internet. So, um, so it had to be more easy than Google Translate. <laughs> It has to be even more, yeah. But that's all. Now, now we should, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to ask you about the rhythm in the place. Mm -hmm. Because when I was uh, doing uh, the woman from before, the director told us we really have to respect. There has a dot. There's a short break. Mm -hmm. There's a long break. And uh, yeah, she was really tough on us, and uh, she was clean. And then we realized that. Uh, there was uh, silence, short and long silence lines, things, 
they were really also text. Mm -hmm. There was no text, and it was uh, it was great to follow that because it. Um, yeah. So how how do you think that you put these things in? This this play, uh, the woman from before, is one of my plays that I sort of. Real, a replay, a sort of dialogue and situation, mm -hmm. and somebody knocking at the door, and somebody's opening, and sort of the classical setting. And it's very <coughs> aggressive and very funny for the aggression and very fast. So it is about rhythm. And, and so the. And what tools do we have? We have the dot, the. What is it? The hyphen and the comma. Maybe sometimes if you are you know, the semicolon, but they are already passing through <laughs> some sphere that is a little bit weird. So, uh, exclamation mark, question mark, that's what we have. But this is, if you take it for, for serious, this is uh, a lot to, to make the music in the language sound. And then there, you know, of course, you have short pause, long pause, but just change of uh, paragraph or the line. And I. I really need that to give the text the structure and uh, sound and uh, a beat. I, 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 really, I really hear that. It has a rhythm. It, has, it does not have a strict rhythm, but it, 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 it is a little bit, in this case, like uh, some sort of rap music. It's, uh, it's, um, it can really flow. Uh, if if you follow it, some don't. Um, but for for me, it's fun. Mm. It's uh, I it's in, even in, in writing, it's it's really nice because I can I can feel that the, the way I, I, I beat the, the what is it the keyboard is changing. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like this, and, and then you, you hear it. Yeah. So you were a bit uh, directing us through uh, this. Ye uh, yes, there is a sort of mm, huh. manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the, let's say a strong proposal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's funny. Because could you elaborate on this not giving the character's name and not telling through your play who's saying this and that. Because early on you said, it's, it's easy, it's possible to ruin your play, mm -hmm. but in a way you invite to that. Very yeah. Much. Um, <laughs> or is it, is it sort of almost like a, say, a ground theme in, in your belief, this trust, this, I, I give you these words, I trust that you, is there something in that, in that um, transition from you to the director, to the, to the actors, to the, the set design. Is there something there? There's a sort of like a craving. Mm -hmm. There's 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 strong belief in, in uh, and uh, optimism uh, in that, and there's a, it's sort of an invitation to work together because theater is it, if it's together, it's always better than if it's kind of, uh, and um, so. Uh, <coughs> If the, the text, in a way, is structurally and rhythmically rather defined, doesn't mean that I sort of put on a, a, a scheme for the director that he can change. He can get he active, not just following it. And, um, and also he can, or they can, react to their working conditions. For example, in in the black water, you can do it with 14 actors, you can do it with 7 actors, uh, maybe. It depends uh, how do you want to do it, or what's the ensemble like, what is the theater like, what is the situation like. Um, so, that is not defined. I, I have sort of a minimum number of actors that I would, could, can imagine. Uh, but uh, but I don't want to define it too too too, too clearly. Uh, um, 
It's, um, but there are other cases of mind where it is more defined, actually. This, in, but this, in this case, which is a little bit like a chorus, a group telling a story, it's, that's something an author can't define. What is it, how does a good group work? What is the chemistry of the group? That's something that, that has the theater to say. I, I noticed and I could inform that, that it also seems like if something is very important, as it is in black water, there's some lines where you suddenly in the middle of the text say, this has to be said by those people. Mm -hmm. These are the characters and this cannot be divided. <coughs> so you so if there's something that's really crucial to you Sometimes yes. You sometimes do that. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Is that, 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 because I've been thinking about this, that you, you read the text, and it should be said also that the Black Water was very much something the ensemble here wanted to do. Is that true, you ensemble? Oh, yeah. You read it and you felt almost physically, I heard, that this was just something you wanted to do, because it was spoken and it was for actors, but it's, it, it might look unfinished, but there's something very finished in the way it looks unfinished. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's to do with you actually controlling quite a lot in a way that looks open. <laughs> because when people imitate you, and I love do, students and dramatists imitate you. Mm -hmm. I can say because I have read plays where I think, oh, this is, and we talk about that it's Shimmel Finnish. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can. I have met the head of drama department saying, "Yeah, this is. I have a student who's writing a little bit like. Shit, that must be nice. That's nice. But I, I think. I'm... But the thing is, they, they quite can't. You know, it, it, there's something missing. <laughs> well, um, I think where 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 my own writing is coming from. Uh, there was maybe no no blueprint, but but this way of storytelling uh, is something so very 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 old. So you can find it in whatever in Greek drama. Uh, uh, it's something that I didn't invent. There's of course sometimes the the, the, the tricky part or the surreal part, um, which which is maybe more me, maybe because. Where I come from, Göttingen city of the city of the brothers Grimm, for example. I have that in my Grimm. Grimm. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Yeah. That, that's in my blood somehow. And uh, and sometimes it pops up. Without I can't control that really. But uh, if uh, I don't know, if, if people find their way to, to uh, write in uh, a way that is it creates images. That's nothing to complain about. No. No. No, that's good. There is a show of that. Questions? I think we should open them for. Yeah. Uh, no, I just was uh, interested in what you said earlier about plays um, uh, coming from aggression. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious if there was a like, uh, specific point or situation that made you start writing? Is that angle still lasting with you? Or? Mm -hmm. um, when I was working as an assistant director in big shows, Shakespeare and whatever, uh, I often not, did not agree with the director's decisions. He did this and this and I said, oh, this is so horrible, this is so cheesy and oh, it should be totally different, we need more blood and let's do it all in black and whatever. So, um, you know, and, and he said, no, this is ridiculous. So, and so I, I get, got more and more angry about who's saying what is right and what is wrong in art, which is very difficult, no? Who's, Who's, who's sort of here, who's having the monopole of the truth? And that is, uh, which of course doesn't exist. Um, and I had this point, I want, I, I, I want to be the one. So that, that was probably the, po the point uh, where, where the, 
the, the initial spark really jumped. Said, and in my very, very first play, it's all about that. What is this? Who's defining? Is this a glass or is it a loudspeaker? I don't know. Well, I could tell you, but maybe it's, not, it's a drum, I'm not sure. So it's about defining and uh, it's a little bit surreal, it's a bit immature, but it's, it's about that. But um, it's desperate. It's desperate in the, in, in, in the search for what is what. And, and that's where the aggression comes from, because if you don't know what to do, what to say, you might feel uncomfortable and you start to yell. Um, that's what I meant about this. Mm -hmm. Anna? I think it's in your plays, I think very often that you use everyday life or the banal in a way that you charge it with almost a mythical energy. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's, it's like that black pool of water is in there all the time, in all of your plays, I think, almost. Um, do you think about myths? And about that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or they, 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 they come to me. Yeah. They come to me. That something I, I really, I have a, a, a fable for it. I don't know. It's just, um, it's, it's a little childish. Or, <coughs> I don't know. But something that's, uh, that I mean, if you, if you fill up daily life with some miracle. Or mystical thing, or mystical miracle, or miraculous miss, I don't know. It gets, it's easier to, to design, to draw the image of daily boring life. Just You just change one detail, and, and, you, and the focus will be different. Uh, I, 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 in this last play I sent to you, there's a very rather poor family, and somebody sends them a glass, an empty glass, and um, and then they put in the, the the drink, and the glass never empties. It's always full. So it's a wonder. That's a, so, and that's you know this this small little detail that changes everything. But often something that's very, that works on stage. Yeah. I think it's very often kind of, it's, it's not easily done, but it's not difficult. It's not like, and down comes, it's not Strindberg and you know, the sky divides and gods come down. <laughs> no. Fire opens and it's often a, a, an everyday, or, or in one of the places also where the man doubles. Mm -hmm. So he used his tomb and one is walking out. Um, As well, yeah. that's more complicated. That was sort of uh, difficult. That's sort of complicated, yeah. More, more difficult, but, but, but yet something an actor can do. Yes. <laughs> they can turn into horses or... Yes, you just say, now I'm a horse. Now I'm a horse. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> yes, it's a horse. Easy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a dragon. <laughs> and now I'm a fine man, and now I'm a baby. And, and now I'm 40 Spanish tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Which uh, other playwrights in influence you or inspire you, living or dead? Um, I'm more into movies, actually. The most inspiring thing was, for me, uh, Italian cinema. Fellini, Antonioni. Very, very important for me. Uh, and in terms of drama, uh, Cortes, for the more, uh, uh, how do you say, contemporary uh, part, uh, uh, but many, many of, of the, 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 a lot of Shakespeare, of course, that Shakespeare really sort of part of my training. Uh, and there's uh, this weird German guy, Heinrich von Kleist, totally uh, crazy. 
um, wonderful in German to read. It, it's uh, amazing. The, the, um, uh, and for the for the German writers, it would be more these people um, from the 70s and 80s. That's Kretz and uh, but not that much really. Uh, um, it's more cinema and bad cinema as well. Mm -hmm. I love bad movies. Like, <laughs> which ones? Oh, whatever. Fast and Furious 8, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terminator 3. Uh, um, sometimes I need to see that shit. <laughs> if I'm stuck with an idea, I don't know, I need to shake my hand. And, and you said Schilder and Wedel, also you were reading. Huh? You said Schilder. But yeah, but, but not recently. That's, uh, it, that, that's part of my education, but that, uh, that's, that's some time ago. Yeah. Um, How's music influencing? Because it seems like there's really a... When I read it, I, it makes sense to me that you're doing it. You know, that's, yeah. there's a dance feeling. Yeah, it, I never hear music during writing. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Um, but since I've been... Living for some time in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Salsa. We have it all the time, or, or worse. <laughs> and I, 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 I don't <laughs> like salsa. <laughs> <laughs> but it's bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do you uh, have you uh, been for film? Film? No, not really, because the German film system is so. Horrible. You have to always work with the TV stations and you have to discuss every idea three times or 30 times until you get to a level that they think would work for everybody. It's very democratic. And it's very, it's, it's sort of a, a group thing. It's not like my splendid isolation where I just sit down and decide my own way. They, they did a movie out of the woman from before. They ruined it to completely <laughs> because they killed all the dramaturgy of the play. They, they told it in a, in a, in a chrono chronologically rated. Uh, it's it's in imaginable. But that's German TV. It's, it's a glass that's always full. Hey, come on. That would, nobody would believe. <laughs> so, <laughs> you change that into, and then you get into it. Um, but uh, but the other day something beautiful happened to me. I have a friend from the, this sort of the time we were talking about 18, 19, post school, lots of alcohol time, and, uh, and the formative years. The, the founder is, and he was in the founder is not only a big drinker and smoker, but also a bartender. Harry, a miss, long lost friend, pops up 30 years later, being a film producer. <laughs> and he likes my stuff. And then, then we met, now the two of us, around about 50. Oh, it's tough, you know. <laughs> Um, and he sort of talked me in about thinking about a movie about exactly the situation that just sort of getting getting older and sort of being confronted with the past or the use. Maybe, maybe that would turn that might turn into some some idea. But I don't. I'm I'm not doing it because I want to get uh, get into movie business. I want to work with Harry. I think. Harry. Mm -hmm. That's the producer. Harry, Harry. Mm -hmm. But do you think that it's, uh, I mean, of course, there's some obvious differences, but uh, is it like, uh, you think different when you, if you think you're going to work with a film, or, I mean, no, it's about the characters and situations? No, I'm, when I'm thinking about the script, I, always, I already had some ideas that are totally impossible for a movie, <laughs> uh, so it's not very different. It's not very different. I, uh, I will try to to make it as impossible as it can be in terms of the the classical movie uh, schemes and plans. Uh, I want to 
to split it up and I want to cut it more radical than I have ever done before. I really want to, 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 to destroy the story uh, to get out of this very conventional way of storytelling that you often find in German movies that are so boring. Um, I want to have many side stories and uh, how do you say, uh, sort of montage. That is, uh, that is a, a really huge challenge. Um, so I'm, I'm probably the only way I can survive this sort of thought of getting into movies is to, to, to defend myself even before I've started and to, to stress the system. I have two questions. Um, do you mostly work on commissions or do you sell your plays after having written them? Um, luckily many commissions uh, in the last year. Sometimes I sell them afterwards. Uh, Anything you prefer? I prefer, for technical reasons, the commission. But, but that's because I have two children, lots of money to pay, divorces and everything. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I need some money. So, <laughs> so the commission helps. Uh, uh, with the novel, it, or the novels, it was different. Because the novels, they were finished before I saw the deal. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 really about paying the rent. That's, mm -hmm. that's basically the idea. And the other question is, um, what was it again? Yeah, um, after this pregnancy of the play, uh, as you called it, um, do you ever do you throw away material when you've began the writing process? Or do you write it from the start to the end? I write from the start to the end. I, 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 I'm not... Of course, I delete things. Or, um, this sort of this... Uh, how is it? Kill your darlings thing? Uh, to to, to uh, condense the plays more and more. But it doesn't happen very much that I take a wrong turn for a very, very long, term, long time. I, I find out that this is a wrong curve uh, rather quickly. So I don't have to delete, to delete pages or the whole act, probably not. Uh, um, but that's something... Um, That's something that, uh, that that you find out with time and experience. That, uh, that if you lose sort of the the, the, the 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 point of pressure in telling a story, if you get lost on something that, that doesn't really get you somewhere, then you sort of, when it's sort of the thing gets slow and sloppy, then. Um, then I, I, I usually stop and think it over and I, I have to find a way how to, how to strengthen the, the, the story again. Uh, did you have any, you mentioned the ones who inspired you and influenced you. Is there any female influences, any women that inspired you? In personal life or as, as artist? Uh, as, an, as a writer. Or, as an artist, I don't know what you want to call it, so... <laughs> uh, of course. But, I mean, it's quite connected, personal life, I mean... Yes. What you do. Yes, I mean, uh, completely. Completely. It's, it, well, many of, my, many of my plays are not the mirror of my private life, but they are the mirror of my private fears, what my private life could become, for example. Or desires, what they could, what it could be like. So I'm living in, let's say, a relationship, and at the same time I'm imagining that one facet of my character, or of her personality, would turn into something else. And then there comes, this becomes sort of a fantasy or whatever, or fear, 
And, and then I said, oh, this would be an interesting play. A woman from the falls is an example for that. That is, uh, I, uh, we had uh, our first baby. And uh, I was standing in the kitchen with the baby, I don't know, and uh, all of a sudden I had to stop. What would happen if my girlfriend, that I had this big love with 16, 17, would knock at the door right now? It's just a start, maybe because of lack of sleep or something. And, uh, but that's where it came from, from the very origin. Does that answer your question? <laughs> okay, when you write at a commission, do you need to then, if you write a play, do you meet then with dramaturgs and head of theatres and directors who tell you, well, this part could be fun here, could you change the end? No, no, no. Is it sort of lazy? <laughs> or no, are no. you just, I'm all actually doing this is a masterpiece? In that part, I'm really horrible. I, 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 when, it, when the thing for me is finished, it's finished. Okay. So but, there, but there is this famous story from a very well-known Swedish theatre, the permission to play <laughs> and The Golden Dragon, mm -hmm. and which is, I think, a worldwide success to be a little bit, not to show off, <laughs> but that's where it is. It's one of the most performed plays yeah. uh, of yours. So I gave it to the theater, and they said, ah, no. <laughs> I, I think you should change it all. <laughs> <laughs> really, no joke. Yeah. Well, honestly, this needs a totally rewrite. Call out. And I said, no. So I'm, that, at that point, I have a little self-esteem. I think I know what will work. And I think that sometimes that could happen with, with dramaturgs or sometimes directors, but that they overread things. Because if it's a long process for years, there's a lot of thought into that, so you can react to that in two days. Especially if the play is a little bit more complicated. So um, uh, it can happen. That during the process, during the rehearsals, if I have the, the confidence that these people are really working on it, or have been working on it, and then they come up with a serious question, uh, of course I will be open to discuss it or to change something. That's, that's a form of respect, and I don't want to be arrogant. But first, get on the same level and, and get really into the text, which is always difficult. Um, and I'm, well, I'm productive, but I'm not fast writing, I'm not just doing it and, and, and sending it out unfinished. I really uh, I work this place over and over and over again till I have the feeling that this is sort of uh, material that works. I could add, because you were saying that it seems like you have a group of people or friends or colleagues that you send your text to. Sometimes, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Which is your own uh, reference group or yeah. people you trust? Some, yeah. <laughs> not not that many. <laughs> Getting less and less, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have this funny situation that I'm living with a lot of uh, South American and Cuban people and they don't even read German. So mm, they can't really see that, what I'm doing. Uh, but of course there are some people. Uh, but maybe it's an isolated thing for you yes. to write your play. So, yes. so that, I guess, is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you really do that? Huh? Why do you really do that? Uh, love. Oh. <laughs> no, yes, and, and, uh, love and. I came there to do a workshop and there was a production of mine and I got back and then I worked there as a director and, and writer. So uh, we, we combined private life and artistic life. But, um, but artistic life in Cuba is very complicated because people are practically not paid. I think $20 a month, or maybe if you are on a very high level, $40 a month would be a monthly wage for an actor. 
So it's, you can see that it's nothing. So we have to improvise and do it on a sort of more amateur level. Um, but it was a very good experience. Four years? Yeah. In Havana? Yeah, but I mean going... Back and forth? Yeah. 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 And you were working in a theater? They have, yeah, I mean, a, in, in Cuba you have groups of theaters. You don't have sort of fixed ensembles. You have, fixed, you have groups. And then the state or art, art council would give you a theater for that period of time. That's, that's a, there's, there are some exceptions from the rule, but that's sort of the basic thing. Yeah. It was interesting to see because in, in the Cubans knew I was working there without any work permit and uh, that's something they actually don't like that much. It's a socialist society. Um, but they tolerated it in a quite nice way. But then they dried it out. We had this nice productions, very good success. But then there's no space to show it again, and you know, and then there's sort of there's this no censorship, but there's not exactly a big input or help coming from the state as well. So, so it was an indirect yeah. censorship. Yeah. How many productions did you do in Cuba? We did uh, two, uh, yeah. and Anne Street and Disco Paris. Paraiso yeah. with uh, 25 Spanish people. Mm -hmm. and and I am five about mm -hmm. yeah. um, In a lot of things, you have very uh, nice scenes and like green scenes. And the golden locker, when Chinese girl dies, she is with China. Mm -hmm. And we are running in, and uh, we are running at night, and there's a man for you. Sometimes I think the the uh, the when in the golden rain when the girl swims home that came uh, that came later. I didn't I, I don't think I did have that. That's as I said, you think you have the ending and then you don't have the ending. I, I knew that they would uh, drop the the Chinese into the water, but this sort of this sort of beautiful part uh, or image, uh, which is not that beautiful in the end, uh, I think that came later. The cognac thing, that the man is sort of bewitched and, and ends up in the bottle, that was more clear from the beginning. Uh, because it's... it's <laughs> You, you, you need sort of the, the, the invisible person being on the scene without being on the scene. So it's so, so small at the bottom that you can see what's going on. Uh, and, it, and of course it's funny because something you can do or theater, this sort of change of size. Uh, but uh, it, I mean, the, 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 even if you think you're all here, Luckily, some crazy idea will pop up during the process, and then hopefully it's a good one. When you wrote this novel, um, did you feel that there were things that you had with you from the dramatic writing that was central for writing the novel, for example? Would you like to say something about that? Didn't do say that. I, I wouldn't agree, but many of the readers or critics said, aha, you can see that this is a theater person who tries to write a novel, haha, how bad is he on that one? But <laughs> he's, it's obvious that he's a theater guy. Uh, I don't think so, but I mean, I though I, my, my, my sort of style as a, as a novelist is rather short, and rather dry, it's not sort of really a flourishing blah blah, it's more seco. And, uh, and maybe that's something that comes from my theater rhythm. Can be there is not that much dialogue in the in the in the novel, but 
of the sun. Um, but I mean, it was the first model, and so maybe the influence is bigger than I personally uh, can see. But in relation to situation and conflict and this? Uh, not that much. Huh? I, I enjoyed writing the novel because of the images huh? that you can do, the, sort of really open up the image of the camera, and you have this wide landscape shot, lots of snow, clear blue sky, a wolf crossing a frozen river. This is sort of very cinematographical in a way. So that's what I enjoy about it. Uh, do you find when you see the play staged in different countries, do you find that relationships and the ways men and women are together in society, is it very different to what you have in mind when you write for your German audience? A very interesting experience, very interesting. Uh, 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 of course, the culture uh, reacts a little bit in a different way to the, to the text and, it, they, and they mean something different. The woman from before, for example, this story about the first love that comes back uh, after so many years means in Germany something entirely different than let's say in Turkey mm -hmm. where I've seen a, a scenic re uh, reading of it and that's of course something you can plan but if, if it works even in a different way it's a, it's a beautiful experience and sometimes uh, there, there's a humor that I wouldn't have seen uh, for, in other cultures, in Taiwan, for example, the, the, the Golden Dragon. And I, I saw it on the internet. It's, it's, it's really funny. It's so different from what they did with the same play in New York. But it's, uh, I mean, that's, that's a nice thing that you, the text goes out and then everybody will give their own input, their own culture. Into it. Have you ever been really furious of something you've seen? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 I was really angry. It was also the woman from before. It, 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 it's really a rather funny text, or at least it's not a boring text. And, and it was so horribly boring and so arty farty. Uh, highbrow, whatever. I, I, I really. Ran to the intendant's, to the boss's office, and oh, mama, no, you can't get into it. He's in the meeting. <laughs> but usually not. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think we are. We can take one last question. Yeah, Holger. Uh, you talk about condensing the text to minimalize it. Mm -hmm. When I heard this uh, part we, with the actors here, I haven't read the play, it's Blackwater. I came to think about a Peter Handke play we played here for some 20 years ago, mm -hmm. without any text at all. Mm -hmm. The hour when we didn't know anything about each other mm -hmm. was too early for the city. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever, ever thought about writing a play without words? Uh, there is one that is close to that, not as Hunter, uh, but a uh, long time ago in May, it's called, it's an old play. It's, uh, that is going into sort of a dance theater direction. And um, yeah, I could imagine that. I mean, Hunter did it, he did it in a very nice way, and so... You talk about 20 Spanish people, they were 350 roles, yes. characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's still, in one hour. He still <laughs> Get there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, but uh, it's a beautiful play, and it, it had a, in Germany this, this famous uh, show in Berlin, Peter Stein, no, the Luke uh, So, better not compete with that. Leave that for another 20 years, and then maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everybody has a one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, possible. Possible descriptions. Um, then again, I think probably I would do it in a way that people would say again what you should see, like 30 Spanish or whatever. I probably would describe the thing as a text 
and not just really leave it on the image level or doing the same thing at the two times. Can I just have a tip for you? Because Mette Edvard Schell is a Danish choreographer and she did the play or like recently it's called Week to Be, where she sits in the audience and reads the play that she wrote and she uh, it is on air at the same time. And the audience just sits in a black box and watch the black box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I imagine. Is that still on? Yeah, she does it from time to time. Yeah. Okay. So you could go and see it? Yeah. Okay, do you have any questions? No. Why don't you Then I, I have one last question for you because. Um, uh, when I was, uh, there's just been a theater festival and I was talking, it was kind of, you know, the kind of festival in Sweden, if you throw a bomb, then a lot of Sweden theater would disappear, so there were just a lot of uh, theater people, and, and a lot of them were asking me uh, that, how did it go that you were coming here? You invited me. Yes. But you said yes. Yes, I said yes. And I'd be happy if you did, but I did uh, talk to quite some people who also asked you to come where you said no. Exactly. Yeah, these people are in Peru. <laughs> 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 or <in> Colombia. <laughs> or in Colombia. <laughs> I'm all yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, no, you made me curious. That's okay. Right. I wanted to see this and, and, and meet you. I, I, know, I just was. Uh, and, I mean, because uh, and, and and it was uh, because I, actually I thought perhaps there was something about Melia also. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> oh, but then, I, I don't know. It's it's a total <laughs> open question. No, I think it's I also think, that I, I just asked and, and I think the I, I think the idea is that it's different if you if you just come to see an opening or show or be part of a rehearsal process maybe or if you come and. You can think about something to make something up, invent something. Mm -hmm. That usually catches my attention. Mm -hmm. And you don't know. And that's, yes, I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious about other working uh, conditions, other cultures, other countries. Uh, and I've, I've never worked in, in, in Sweden, really. And I've been here, but I've never sort of got into it. And, uh, and of course, my work is interesting. Because harbor cities. Harbor cities is good. Harbor cities always had their. Um, it's like Istanbul. I mean, we can't compare, but it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, it's uh, That's maybe a Göttingen. It's, it's, it's a Göttingen complex. We don't. We just have a very tall little river. Uh, not even worth mentioning it. So uh, the harbor city has a very uh, romantic and as a. Because everybody knows it's a tough business, uh, uh, but it, it's always sort of the world is opening up, and, uh, and that's uh, something that that interests me. So um, the thing that you're on the edge and yeah, is yeah. near and uh, yeah, something about that. Yeah. Thank you for hmm. spending a couple of hours, one and a half hour with us, and for. For, for hanging out with us, and, and there will be coffee, and and you're doing, uh, you're going to the theater school tomorrow. Tomorrow. And so, so this is a collaboration between the theater school. I should say as well that you are here. So thank you for that as well. And and then um, we hope this is just the beginning. Give me a hand.